I'm just kind of struggling to figure out where I stand on the marches that are happening today because on the one hand I feel a responsibility to take action because um, we've obviously been given a democracy. I was born into this amazing democracy and there's a responsibility that comes with that privilege to kind of hold governments accountable and just steward what we've been given well going forward. But at the same time, um, I've really been challenged personally about the condition of my heart because there's a lot of injustice uh, that has been happening that I haven't really been heartbroken for, which I don't think is right. And stuff that's been happening just around the corner, for example, about 15 minutes away from where I live, there's a community in the area of Dussenhook. Two things that have been happening there. The one is uh, EnviroServe, which has been affecting that immediate community severely, um, but only when it started to affect kind of the greater surrounding area in the upper highway area did it become an issue and then everyone was kind of up in arms about it and it's kind of started to sort itself out but before that uh, it's been affecting that community and we did nothing about it um, which is not right and then another thing there is that they haven't had water for the last year again nothing's been done about it and no one's kind of spoken up for that community it's tough because uh, I want to hold government accountable but I don't want to just do it from a place of like now it's affecting me so I'm gonna say something that's the kind of crux of today is is what is the motive behind it what is your intention um, are you just saying something because now it's made you a little uncomfortable kind of the crux of the issue is uh, what is your motive or your intention behind uh, standing up is it because now you're a little bit uncomfortable and now it's affecting you or is it really because you just want to hold government accountable and and kind of exercise your right in a democracy so what's happening today is is difficult for me for a couple of reasons firstly it just feels like it's been put out there as the call to for unity to hold our leadership accountable and to exercise democracy but I don't trust that it's actually that because there's been so many opportunities to do that in the past that are real and that affected people in a real way like Americana which was the state our leaders killing people for no reason at all really so why couldn't we band together as a country and call and hold our leadership accountable there so what's happening today just feels like actually something that's fueled by selfishness and people wanting to protect themselves for because for the first time something's happening that's directly affecting them so it doesn't feel like a call for unity it doesn't feel like hey let's stand together against our leadership it feels like oh no my wealth is being threatened my comfort is being threatened my privilege is being threatened so now I want everyone to sort of come along and help me make sure that I can protect what I have and that I can live as comfortably as I always have. I can't align myself with with what's happening in terms of protests, in terms of Black Friday because of that. And just also because Black for me is not a day, it's every day. It's my whole entire existence, which sort of brings me into my second point, which is we're trying to band together to bring down a government but the government is not the issue it's the system in which the government exists the truth of the matter is for me the state doesn't feel significant and i know probably for a lot of others because the government and the system has never represented us it wasn't built for us and so 
it'll always oppress us, it'll always bring us down. And so whether Zuma falls or not, we're still in a system that is not for us. We're still in a system that we can never really prosper in. And that's why like, I, I'm, I'm all for fighting corruption. I'm all for reconciliation and, and uniting and standing together as a nation. But this doesn't feel significant for me because I've never been under any illusions. The government has never been for us. Our leaders have never been for us. There's been no shift for the average black person from apartheid to now. So whether we, we have a white president or a black president or we're led by the ANC or the DA, we're still enslaved. We're still at the bottom fighting to be heard. And yeah, and that's why it's it's difficult for me. I don't even feel worthy to to, to like represent the, the thoughts and the, and, the, and the voices of so many because I am a privileged black person. I've lived a comfortable life. I just don't feel like what's happening today is addressing the real issues. So I just, I, I struggle to. And I don't agree with the, the idea that not protesting today is slipping into passivity because if I believe that it was a genuine call for unity, a genuine call for democracy and for reconciliation, and then I'd be all for it. But this doesn't change anything for the average black person. I know for a lot of people, this is the penny dropping. This is everything that's happened in the past week has finally brought them to the realization that stuff like what's meant to be happening isn't happening that our, our government government is failing us but for me and for the average black person that's what we've always known we've always known that our, our government doesn't serve us we've always known that the system doesn't serve us and so it's nothing new and it's great that people are finally realizing that fact and that's a great thing but it's what we've always known so I think the best part about being human is that you are the only person who can control you and you're the only person who can judge you or hold yourself to account. The important thing for me is that this is a protest. And this is a protest against leaders who are perceived to be behaving selfishly, uh, like grossly selfishly, overtly selfish. And it doesn't in any way undermine or demean previous selfishness or previous corruption. I just think that the effects of what happened with the cabinet reshuffle and borderline state capture are so grotesque and so overt that they warrant a response and that my response to this is not out of fear of overseas holidays or business economic things or you know inflation my, my response on this is is one of holding that might is just being responsible for my democratic right to say not okay not cool you know to hold our leaders accountable to say that's not fair you know not not cool and in the context of our struggle as a nation and and historically and the racial complexities and tensions that live within those within the power to be voiceful it's damn hard you know and listening to all the different viewpoints i think it, i think it's really hard and it's difficult and it's difficult to, to hold someone to account when there's such complexity. And I don't fully understand the complexity, although I understand it with my head, I don't fully understand it with my heart. And that is because of my background and whatnot. But I think passivity in the face of complexity on such a bigger issue is not okay. So the only human I can control in this is myself. And the only motives I can judge are my own. And so to be passive in the face of complexity for me is not an option. You know, and that, that does mean if making a public comment on something does call you to a responsibility and I love what Cam said about the diet and the lifestyle thing and I think that is a something that I will be engaging on and just tackling injustice with you know on a, on a more public level but I think the underlying underlying thing for me is to be active even in the face of, of um, complexity. So I think in trying to process what's been going on recently just had a lot of thoughts around like the whys and the bigger motivations about what these protests would be. I wrote something, I think I'm just going to read it, 
think maybe I make myself better understood in my writing. So I've called it going on diet, a wary white protest, aka a call to consistency. Some things I've understood better this week. My voice competes with your voice, which competes with her voice. I missed what is a call for unity, when what is clear is that beneath the surface of competing voices there is a much more worrying fracture. It's so deeply entrenched that it feels almost impossible to call for a united front, when there are wounded layers beneath begging to be recognized. I think most of us would agree that we don't want to see our leaders continue making deeply problematic and undemocratic decisions, thinking they can do so without being accountable to the people they serve. I don't stand for that. Leadership goes alongside humility. Something has gone terribly wrong. The only thing is, we urge our people to make our voices heard. But what some of us don't understand is that many voices have already been shouting in desperation for so long. And somehow their shouts have been silent. You want a united front. To borrow a business term, you need buy-in. You'll maybe only ever get that buy-in if and when you begin the arduous process of acknowledging and addressing the deepest fracture that caused this mess in the first place. And that's like both historical and ongoing and structural and on a hard level. I speak this first and foremost to myself before I speak it to any other. Protesting injustice and exercising your democratic right is a powerful thing. So powerful that it inevitably entails some weighty responsibilities, most of which involve accountability for your actions. Asking myself, if I'm going to protest, do I understand the implications and ramifications of what I am getting myself into? Because it means I'm committing to following through on what I publicly declare I stand against. This is not a one-day affair. This is a continuing commitment to a cause that I believe in. It is also a commitment to standing against injustice in its various insidious shapes or forms, because injustice is injustice. It's not something I should be turning on one day and off the next. A selective justice is how I've heard it explained recently. Selective justice is a mark of privilege which I bear. I guess the point is, if you're going to protest, awaken yourself to understand what it's about at a deep heart level. Don't do it if you're only going to do it on a Friday. Live what you say. Live a consistent commitment against injustice on a Monday, a Tuesday, in April and in September, today, tomorrow, next year and in 20 years. And here is my big metaphorical title moment. It's like a diet versus a lifestyle change. Diets are fads. You get into them and then you inevitably lose steam or interest. They're not sustainable. A lifestyle change is understanding fundamentally that certain habits are less conducive towards healthy living than others. You change your habits in order to change yourself. And you change yourself because you will never change anything or anyone before you dig deep inside first. Don't claim to protest if you aren't prepared to undertake the risky lifestyle change that comes with it. The accountability and commitment to speak out continuously against injustice. I'm saying that from here on out and on the journey that I've been on in the last few years, I would like to state that I would like to be consistent. I don't want to be on diets. I want to change my lifestyle, to be consistently more aware and brave enough to be active about the many insufferable and continual injustices around me. Even though it's terrifyingly overwhelming and on most days all I feel is tongue-tied. And more than anything to be more consistently listening, so much more listening to be done. When it comes to this whole protest thing, it's impractical to protest because the people who have power are the it's the NEC. Only the only the NEC can like dethrone Zuma, as they did with Mtabun Big. But the problem is the NEC don't wanna uh, angry the people from the pro council of provinces, who are pretty much responsible for the agenda that is uh, set within each province. So the moment these guys, your query mandashes, these guys start speaking out, the Council of Provinces people are just going to attack them because they are 1,000% pro-Zuma. The only true people who can like dethrone Zuma are the ANC supporters, pretty much. If they were to stand up and, uh, you know, actually take back their minds instead of following leaders, allowing leaders to, to impose the, the political mindsets, they should actually start thinking for themselves and decide. And if they were to decide against the Zuma regime, then it would be a whole lot smoother. So maybe, yeah, this is all pointless, guys. You're wasting your time. <laughs> for me, trying to understand what's been going on has been rather overwhelming. What's touched me the most is constantly feeling a cultural divide. And with the protest, it's shown us how strong that cultural divide really is. And I think for me that's that's what's touching me more is 
is the people and not the government. The workplace is is somewhere that you spend most of your time really. You know, you hear you come in eight, half past eight and you leave half past five. Like majority of your hours are in this space. And what I've been challenged with is how do we invest in this place and how do we invest in the people around us? And then from there, start taking that into your general life. And that's from small interactions from the lady at the till or the guy that's putting in your petrol or somebody that in the gym change room. How do we connect? How do we unify? Because what's happening now is a time where we should be united and we're not. That's what bothers me the most. And that people haven't been, they've been complacent for change. We rely on our government to, to change things and for time to change things. But in that mindset, we become complacent and we don't do things. We don't turn around from everyday actions and move into something new. For me, I think language is a big one. Why is it that a workplace only speaks English? Why hasn't that changed? Why must others learn English but others mustn't learn Zulu or Hosa. The question always just goes back to why. And is it fair? No, it's not fair. It's not fair. What's been happening is not fair. And the fact that people are feeling that things haven't been for the people and they will never be for the people, so they're just not going to do anything, says a lot about our current situation. It's protests like this that do cause for, for a voice in, in many ways, whether that's standing still and silent or going to the street. Streets. Either way, this, this day has brought about some sort of shift or change into a new perspective or new dialogue. That's where I think we should be focusing our attention is going, what are the outcomes from a day like today and how do we implement that into our everyday? I think we, we tend to focus on the negative so, so easily because it's obvious, but there's little things that have been happening throughout this week that are actually positive. They may be hurtful, but growth comes through pain and we just need to keep reminding ourselves and keep recognizing that's what it should become. It should become a lesson for, for growth, a lesson for unity, a lesson for cultural divide and how we're going to create those bridges. I think that's kind of where my stance has been. I haven't I haven't been investing in news. I haven't been investing in trying to understand why people are protesting. For me, it's been, why are we not united? Why isn't the whole of South Africa fighting for this change? That's where my heart's been. That's, I think, where it'll always be. My heart's always with the people. It's not focused on the leaders. Yeah, I prefer not to get too involved with politics in, in, a, in a way. And I would rather prefer getting involved with myself and the people around me.